Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of news to hit today. We've got a special piece slipped into the news as well, but we're starting with our star because unless it's your first day here, you know we don't need sunspots to have space weather. Let's come to the last 24 hours on the sun and find that indeed, it's just the coronal holes. The northern opening is having its solar wind arrive now with the southern opening coming in behind it. That sets us up for days of unrest. Now the KP index isn't budging much yet. The impact is literally just beginning this morning. Orange panel on top shows plasma density and you can see the ramp up on the right this morning and then the drop out literally just the last hour or two. Below that purple plasma speed rises as the leading density wave crests and begins to descend. That brings the faster stream in behind it. Here's what it looked like on the new magnetosphere models. Remember, neither this nor the old ISWA charts can actually monitor or model the whole field. Nothing can do that. These are just math based on solar wind. It's the expansion wave at the end of the faster stream that we want you to see. And as we watch it one more time, watch how the pressure increases at the magnetopause. That's as the density rises. But then at the end, the density will drop out, plasma speed increases, and we see the violent whip that could result in the geomagnetic storms later today or tomorrow. And we can see that it took the planet from ambient quiet magnetic disturbance to a quick entry into deteriorating magnetic stability. Eyes on spaceweathernews.com to watch the solar wind and geomagnetic disruptions as they play out. Magnitude 6 earthquake return continues in the Atlantic Ridge, but also continuing are the blood echoes. Just as the West Pacific roared back two days ago, the deeper signals are now beginning to hit Central and South America too. Wanted to quickly note that contrasting those floods we showed earlier in the week in India, they have the opposite problem in Pakistan where a drought has been enhanced by a heat wave that has now taken out a third of the cotton crop. This is one of their key production items. Now let's go back to earthquakes for a moment, because it appears that Caltech has found the first legit signal of repetition affecting Cascadia. The way that the great earthquake will unfold will, not shockingly, be a bit of unfolding of this fault, if not an absolute break. Not only is one sheet bent down, but the force doing so pushes the west coast of the country up slightly against that pressure. It won't just be the shaking, but the push upward of the water for the tsunami when it breaks. Same as happened in Japan in 2011. Now the kicker here is the small quake phases that do seem to have a repeating pattern. Even if these are not absolute, these may be able to tell us which times are of the highest risk and may be able to be monitored for approach to that danger zone. Up next, nobody wants to see this, right? Yeah, that is a bad day for anyone underneath it, but they say they're one step closer to being able to deflect these asteroids. They did go a little Hollywood on us, as they've modeled taking asteroid Bennu off course with a nuke. Turns out they were able to get their computers to make the math and trajectories work. Might be science, might be science fiction, but the asteroids are out there, so at least they're doing something to study deflection. Folks, I really wanted to drop this one in here. One of the authors of this 2004 work saw it as relevant and accurate as ever now and sought to get it published for free on Archive. That happened last night. The title isn't misleading. The concept that planetary resonances, specifically Jupiter and Saturn, and possibly involving Earth, Uranus, and Neptune, have the math and the patterns to be controlling the solar cycle. This not only touches back to critical elements of planetary geometry that we touch every month at our website, but it also indicates a grand minimum is due this century. These are some of the first people I've found suggesting that. Up next is strontium production in space. Now they are very confident that what they saw was a neutron star merger, or at least a major collision between them. And their spectral pickup brought back the elemental production they were expecting, plus, of course, the strontium. They say it is a new way to make these elements, but they also say the result of the star merger is a kilonova. So really, how new of a mechanism are they actually proposing? Well, hey, at least they're not suggesting we look for something crazy like wormholes. Respectable scientists wouldn't, uh, hmm, okay. Good luck with that, Buffalo. Let's wrap up cosmology with a confirmation of the expansion catastrophe in the larger scale physics. Now, while attempting to fix the Hubble constant and CMB tension regarding the expansion of the universe under their paradigm, they found the tension and disagreement and problem existing still and doing so at a greater rate than previously believed. Basically, they knew they had something really wrong. They just didn't realize how wrong they were. Now, I wanted to share yesterday's Deeper Look episode because it's rare when we get something so expansive and poignant 
that it covers our world completely and others in the exact same blanket in one breath. Check out the video. Echo Chambers, the creation of personality-mirrored online experiences. These have amplified formerly minimally invasive aspects of the prisoner's dilemma, launching them into having major roles in everyday life. And since it has been the major hurdle of our community for years, it is now humorous to see it happening in large-scale politics and culture as well. Now, when I want to know more about the math and science behind these issues, what else would I do? I go to the journals. This well-timed article in Nature details a number of things that will sound very familiar to those who have ever tried to, say, have a climate discussion, and now applies more broadly. Now, what we have is information gerrymandering, and its root lies at the core of things like algorithms and marketing techniques of both sides. It's now an all-parties tool that has left us unable to come up with a consensus, and the scary part is that this condition may not be able to be overcome. We saw this take shape with both sides of politics claiming shenanigans on Facebook last election. And for our community, you might recognize it as us being accused of being oil shills for the climate arguments. And now to understand this, we have to learn more about information gerrymandering. And it's partly our fault when it comes to the mainstream side of things. You know, the key sign is the ultra polarization of the discourse to where it seems like the middle ground is disappearing. Logic and compromise is disappearing, and party, policy, or dogmatic loyalty is seen as more valuable than debate, different ideas, and open-mindedness. Because the opposition to climate change is seen as pro-oil, this polarization harms the middle ground, our position, and all sensible attempts to overcome emotion with facts. Then, they notice that the will of the people begins to fail. The prisoner's dilemma kicks in hard and the benefits of finding a consensus are outweighed by the passion for one selected preference. This is causing the now widespread all-or-nothing risk and lack of compromise that has overtaken political reporting, online media, etc. It also works against any open-mindedness in our realm. It becomes a more emotional and passionate position, and all of this is reinforced by our own online proclivities. When it was just TV news and a bit of newspaper leaning, it wasn't so bad, but now the majority of the majority's interactions are more and more echo chamber mirrors of their own personalities and their wants and beliefs. This effectively takes out all dissenting voices, ones that could offer other explanations or new ideas, and reinforces the voice in your head like an echo, forming a picture of reality that looks very much like yourself. Now, when I read this full paper, it was amazing how many times I forgot I was reading a piece about politics. This is what we've been living every day trying to run down the middle of the road and having the majority of attacks against us fall into the realm of misidentification, seeing us as one of the extreme polarized sides rather than having any substance. And it also makes me wonder if we are reaching any new people randomly on the internet or if we just catch the people skewing this way to begin with. And what does this say for your Twitter? and Facebook feeds, your YouTube feeds, and your favorite people that you follow. If you are strongly right or left, you need to realize the stuff you see in your feed is hidden from the other side, but it's replaced with equally incendiary and polarizing stories against your side. These end up pushing us more and more into the echo chambers and further away from being heard by the other side. Now, I may agree that unless something drastic happens, this split will keep the people divided further and further, and without the strength of consensus, well, it doesn't work out too well for the prisoners. Well, sadly, I do believe that the options at this stage are downward spiral or collapse of the entire paradigm causing it. We greatly appreciate your support. Last day for the sweatshirt hoodie sale at otf.sales.com. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.